Well, hi, everyone. Well, we have a breaking news story with the imminent failure of a dam in Minnesota. It's near the town of Mankato. It's called Rapidan Dam. And uh, I spend a lot of time in the summers up in Minnesota, and I can tell you it's been an extremely wet summer, uh, particularly the month of June here. And it's just been amazing how much flooding there's been going on in the area. And thanks to a viewer, this uh, story was brought to my attention. This dam is essentially overtopped. And so you have water going to a low spot on the left abutment. So when you're talking about dams, the orientation is to look downstream and that's your left and that's your right. So it's the place where this gravity dam connects to its left side or the left abutment. So I wanna go through and show you some videos. I wanna show you what the mechanism of this failure, ongoing failure, uh, is going to be if it's not already obvious and then also tie in to some parallels I see with Three Gorges Dam if you can believe that. So you can see here we've got water just pouring through. This site's located southwest of Minneapolis and just southwest of Mankato. We'll zoom in here with Google Earth. And uh, yeah, you can see here's, here's Glacier Road, which is just upstream of the dam. This river flows to the north. It's just another location map, show you where in south central Minnesota this dam is located. And as I mentioned, this Blue Earth River where this dam is located, this Rapidan Dam, and it flows 108 miles northward to the Minnesota River. So the dam is owned and operated by Blue Earth County. It's a hydroelectric dam that was built between the years of 1908 and 1910. According to the county website, one worker was killed during its construction. This dam's being over 100 years old is in really rough shape. The last few years, the county has been looking at various proposals to either repair or remove the dam. So you can see here that there are five tainter gates for the spillway and two timber gates. Power at this dam was generated by two turbines that could run at 600 cubic feet per second each, and it generated enough power for two to 3,000 residents in the area. The drainage area is 2,400 square miles. Typical flow is 827 cubic feet per second. At the 100-year flood, it's 34,600 cubic feet per second. I haven't heard an update here, but I'm sure that's been greatly exceeded and the record flooding was 43,100 cubic feet per second. Here's a construction photo taken closer to 1909, I suspect. Here's a view of a guy fishing immediately downstream. Just another aerial view. The top of the photo is looking north. Here's a view looking downstream. So off on our left-hand side would be the left abutment which is located to the left of the powerhouse. Now, one thing they didn't need more of today is more rain. This is the radar image that I captured right before I started filming this video at 4.30 on Monday, June 24th. But let's look at this video. I wanna point out a couple of things that I think are pretty interesting. So we've got a helicopter view. This is from a Fox News station. I'll put the link in the description because I think they've been doing ongoing live feeds. You can see all the debris that's accumulated on the upstream side and water's pouring probably over and through the gates. You can't get a good uh, view here. And you also see water pouring through the powerhouse. As we move around here, you can see all the water. That is not an emergency spillway. That's water that has flowed over the left abutment and has scoured. So given the flow of water, it has sufficient velocity to erode the soil material that's at that location. I don't see any indication of rock. Initially, what I thought was rock here was, I believe, some type of concrete that was probably placed during original construction because I've got a photo later on that shows that left bank and it's all soil. But you can see here, this is an uncontrolled release of the reservoir water. And if the head cutting or the downward scour eroding out that left side continues, you could get pretty much 
a sudden and total release of the reservoir, which would be a catastrophic release. Local officials are in the process of evacuating the downstream channel. I understand there's a campground there that people should be out of at this point. And they think the biggest impacts if this dam were to fail, and it, it has failed, this is just a question of is it going to have a catastrophic release of the reservoir, and that is all the sediment upstream that's accumulated over these past 120 years is going to deposit throughout the downstream channel and leave quite the mess. So a lot of environmental damage uh, looming here. Now one thing I want to point out here too, it looks like they've closed this glacier road which is just upstream of the dam, which is a good thing because if the velocities pick up even more than they are now, the flowing water, especially if there's a catastrophic release of the reservoir, you could anticipate scour, just as you have at the left abutment, occurring around the bridge foundations. So there is some risk here to the bridge, although I don't know the particulars of its foundation. I just know generically if you have a, a bridge with piers out in the water and you get extreme flooding, scour and damage or loss of the bridge could be a concern. So as I mentioned, this has parallels to Three Gorges Dam, not in terms of size, but in terms of the potential failure mechanism. You know, these hydroelectric projects, the goal is to keep the water in the reservoir as high as possible to generate the maximum amount of power. And that's how China has reportedly been operating Three Gorges Dam. And although I don't have any specific information about damage to Three Gorges Dam or ongoing deterioration. Generically speaking, and this is what I presented in my video, I thought the biggest risk to Three Gorges Dam would be an overtopping event, just like you're seeing here with this rapid end dam failure going on here in Minnesota. So I'd like to send a shout out to the channel members. I appreciate your ongoing support. You should consider becoming a channel member. Regular stories get previewed by the channel members and there's other perks that come along with it. Also, I'd like to thank those of you who have provided super thanks. That's another way to support the channel. And of course, uh, those of you who have sent me uh, leads on news stories, as well as additional information on stories that I've covered in the past, I really appreciate that. If you have a tip or a future video idea, reach out to me. My email is info at ftandc.com. I also have the digital download from the biggest civil engineering disasters for the past 100 years. Also, I've got new downloads that are in the wings, so I'll update video descriptions to include downloads for those as well. Thanks very much, everyone.